Craig, many of my physicist friends tell me that time is not fundamental, which goes completely against our normal human intuition. So what I'd like to do is get a sense of the, the history of this thinking. It's not something that just occurred recently. The idea that there's no time, which strikes you as so strange, and you think, well, there's change, there must be time, uh, it does have this weird uh, history. It goes way, way back, uh, back to the ancient Greeks, and uh, pops up from time to time. Of course, it depends on what you mean by time to some extent, but for instance, uh, Parmenides uh, had all these paradoxes of motion. He couldn't get around, couldn't understand how motion could happen. When you shoot a, an, an arrow, you know, first the arrow has to go halfway, then halfway to halfway, then halfway to halfway. Well, then how does it ever get anywhere? Uh, and it wasn't until much later, you know, and it wasn't his fault really that he, he didn't have the mathematical or physical uh, theory to really fully answer his question. Um, but he did end up positing this completely, what they call a Parmenidean, you know, timeless, static world, which had no change in it. If we then fast forward in time, we can look at little snippets here and there where different people have taken away certain bits of time that people have thought of as fundamental. So Boltzmann, for instance, in the 19th century, the founder of statistical mechanics, which is the theory that... Uh, explains thermodynamics and the, the flow of heat and that, um, said the direction of time, the direction of increasing time, isn't some fundamental fact, but it's rather uh, the direction of increasing entropy, which is, loosely speaking, the direction of going toward equilibrium, going toward, disor uh, to, toward uh, disorder. And so if you thought that the direction of time was really fundamental to time... Going forward all the time, yeah. yeah. Then psh, it's gone. Then later, the distinguished logician, Kurt Gödel, he would go for walks with Einstein at the Institute uh, for Advanced Study at Princeton after work, because they lived near each other. And uh, Einstein's equations are horribly complicated, but to Gödel, you know, he could do, he could do them. <laughs> and so at home, he came up with this really bizarre solution to Einstein's equations, through which you have... Uh, possible time travel paths through every single point. And in that space time, you can't even find a, a single now at all. There's not even a single spatial slice that extends everywhere. And he thought, well, if the laws of physics allow that, then, and there's clearly no time in that, then the laws allow no time. And so there's no time, he thought. I actually think well, those arguments are, in hindsight, kind of a bit confused, really. Um, but I do think it's interesting that now when you go to quantum gravity, where you're trying to marry together quantum mechanics and general relativity, you know, they the clash on the idea of time. And so some people... Where, have, where just define each one. Where general relativity says what about time? Yeah, so general relativity says that time, uh, you know, the, the ticking of the clock is uh, local to you, and it uh, depends on the matter distribution. So it could how, how, you know, how those ticks happen depend on you know, whether you're near a planet or not. Quantum mechanics says, no, no, no. It's just more like classical physics. It's got you know, this, distinguished, it's this distinguished parameter. That time is a fundamental background in which everything else plays out. That, that's right. And so you try to marry these two together, and they clash on time. And so one option is just to get rid of it. Now there's getting rid of it and getting rid of it. There's getting rid of it and not explaining the motion that we see, which would clearly not be, you know, would not be good science. And there's getting rid of it and still explaining things. And so that's what I think is interesting about some approaches in quantum gravity, where you could have an idea, a fundamentally timeless world. What I mean by that is uh, that there's, there's nothing you would really dub nothing worth calling time there. But you could still precisely say, if, we, if I say, say to you, Robert, if I say, time is that with, with respect to which the matter fields evolve, uh, I could still find in that system of correlations with no time, I could find regimes where the matter fields end up looking like they evolve according to time. 
uh, now we can call that, and we can call that thing time. And so then we could say that even though that fundamentally there's no time, but that in a certain regime, something that becomes worth calling time. Well, if you have something that changes or some relationship between the two and there's change, isn't that time? Isn't that one definition of time? Yeah, I think that's right. So if I but it's a narrow edition. It's narrow, but if it explains what we see, and so if it's, if it's explaining the relationship, you know, my hand moving back and forth closer and further away from you, well, isn't that enough? I don't know whether it's enough. That's the frustration because we have this integrated feeling of time, and now by disaggregating it and saying this piece may not work at all, this piece may work partially, this piece may work, you, you know, we, we have a different conception. Is, is it possible that what happens on the micro level is sufficiently different than what we perceive, that, that it's a difference of scale as opposed to a difference in kind? Um, or, or, yeah, or, I think yeah, maybe, that, maybe that's a good way to put it, because, uh, yeah, so we're used to the idea that, you know, at the micro level might have very different properties than the macro level. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, see objects as colored, but we don't think atoms and you know, <laughs> protons are red or blue. Right. Now we're looking at the sort of the ultimate in uh, uh, disagreement between levels. <laughs> we're saying even time uh, isn't uh, emerges from one level to the other. Um, but I think that's right. It would be more of a question of degree because some things may be, you know, in certain regimes, things may become behave more and more time-like until eventually you say, aha, that it is behaving just the way, it, if it looks like time, you know, walks like time, it's time.